Hey guys, Santo here, Santo Inspiring Power, Iron Camp Fitness. I don't know if we could play music, man, on this. This is my second live. The first one got restricted because I probably said something. This one, we're doing some painting. This one, uh, this is what, one thing I like to do. I've been doing it my whole life. Um, some shadow work I've been doing. I've been working on, I love light. I love light and shadow and everything to do with like um, the art, sh shapes that it creates, just how shadow kind of, shadow and light create these amazing shapes. This is a, this is an artwork here that you're going to see when it's kind of coming to its, uh, fruition, but, uh, put a lot of work into it. You'll see when it's finished, it's just going to be black. I'm just putting black ink, um, uh, black paint on there and, uh, you can't really see much now, but, uh, when it's done, you'll see, you'll see what it is as I'm going on it. So, uh, like I said, this is my second time on here. I'm not really good at this kind of stuff. Um, but I hope to, you know, hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, I'll be talking and you guys can hang out. And if anybody can tell me, like, the rules and stuff, like if I could play music or it's, it's copywritten or if I have to uh, get certain music, cause I'd rather, I, like, I like to listen to a little bit of music now if I'm with you guys, but I don't know if I can, you know. If there's a certain type of music we, li we can listen to. Where am I looking? Am I not even looking? Yeah, okay. Well, thanks for coming. If anybody's in here, I'm just going to be uh, working on some painting here. We'll see what we can get. Probably work on this end of the board. Yeah, so I've been doing art my whole life. Um, basically, my dad was an artist. I got into it right away. He had some jobs he wanted me to do. And I started off just like taping, you know, taping walls, taping baseboards. And he was a full finisher. Uh, like a, he made walls look like marble or um, a wood block walls things like that I'll try to show you guys some of the stuff but uh, I got right into it I got right into it I loved it and then eventually I got into cartoons and uh, graphics and stuff and he got a couple jobs that he wanted me for and I uh, I started getting into doing murals and I did one for a place downtown Toronto, or no, uh, Danforth District in Toronto. Danforth, uh, kind of like Greek town. This place called Cincinnati Kid. I did like uh, sports murals. I did sports murals there. That was my first time. I was 13 years old. And it was my dad's, uh, it was like his cousin, his cousin's place. It was a deli. But uh, it's shut down now. But the back room, I found, ended up finding out the room I was painting was a uh, underground, it was like, underground gambling it was like an underground gambling place it was the front was a deli and it was a deli and uh it was like an under it was like like gambling there my my dad was the bouncer apparently so that was funny when i found out about about that yeah so i'm just putting black in here this is only going to be black i already lined up the heaviest shadows in this picture and i try to get rid of everything else so I'm, i got really no detail but the shadows, but the hardest shadows. So that's what my art, that's like the art I'm trying to get into is, I always used to like the stuff that you have no idea what it is until you step far away from it. You gotta look at it from a certain angle. You gotta look at it from a certain distance and it's, it looks so crisp, you, you wonder why you didn't see it. Um, and it's just kind of my Santo shadow art. I just kind of developed it. Just recently actually. I think I did my first piece a couple months ago, but it's been something I've been working on forever because I couldn't, I couldn't get it right. I couldn't get it right. I'll try to show you guys some pieces so you know what I mean. But this will come together soon. I'm hoping I stay up late. I haven't been sleeping well and I got a client starting at 5 30 a.m. tomorrow for a personal training but he's a good friend of mine that's why I'm doing it that time because any later he's probably not going to come he's going to get he's a busy busy guy he runs a company here in town Fort McMurray and he's probably not going to come if I don't get him in early because his normal time was like anywhere between my normal time I don't normally start till about nine or ten so that's he's already like into his job by that time so I'm like he miss, he's missing days, um, work's getting busy, so I gotta do something that he has no excuses for. 
So I said, you're coming in tomorrow at 5.30. Got three alarms set. I'll take care of it. But I promised my, my wife I would finish this tonight for her friend. So we'll work on it together, guys. You're here with me. Welcome. This is the Iron Camp studio, the art studio that you're in right now. My, uh, my zen place, my place I like to chill. And just kind of hang out. Yeah, right now I'm just doing the shadows, the heavy shadows for this piece. I'm just trying to just cut them. Just get a good cut on the line. Notice right there, missed a bit. But just get some good cuts. And then I can fill it in. But the biggest thing with this kind of art here is to make sure you're consistent with, like if one character has a certain type of shadow and the other character doesn't, then you're gonna, it's not gonna look right. Because there's multiple different depths of shadows in, a, in an image. The different types of depths will, will change the shape of it. I'm looking for the darkest depths and it's gonna, there's a lot of detail that's gonna be taken out because of that. And I was scared at first, but I realized our minds put it together. Like our, our eyes figure it out. It's weird. You guys will see it after this. And uh, I'm happy I am able to show you. It was amazing that I had been given the opportunity to do live, having over a thousand, a thousand followers, I think. So thanks guys, that's amazing. And I hope to be doing some stuff if you guys like it uh, more and more. And uh, I'm new to this, so if you guys write to me or anything like that, and you could let me know. Uh, you guys gotta find out what I'm painting. It's gonna be a surprise. This is kinda, um, if you stick around you come or you come back or whatever, you'll see what it is, but I'm, I'm doing shadow art, which is basically getting the darkest, darkest shadow in an image and nothing else. And I'm, 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 I'm obsessed with shadows. I'm obsessed with like how just the simple line somebody does on an image, just brings it out or just brings it back or just it just defines it right that's what i was trying to trying to create with this um and i kind of got a style going you're not going to see it yet as i kind of paint through here but um it will come through it will come through and it's just the darkest colors like darkest colors in the image and i get rid of all the other ones and our minds still put it together and it still looks pretty detailed I just got to get a better job here. My, my forearm's been acting up because I've had nerve damage since a neck injury. And uh, I just got to watch out that I don't start shaking in my right arm because that happens. But I'm able to paint. I thought I was never going to be able to paint again. So I'm happy. I don't care. But yeah, if you guys have questions, put them on there. I'll try to uh, respond to them as best I can. Um, or any kind of ideas. I just appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. You guys know I'm a, a mental toughness coach. I, I love doing painting. I think uh, all people should have some sort of creative escape, whatever it might be, music, uh, Ceramics, photography, you know, I think it's important, man, to be creative, to have a creativity behind us. I teach that to all my athletes. All my athletes, I tell them, man, what are you into? They're like, think about designing something. I do artwork. I offer them if they want to come. Some, some do. Some get into music. But I think it's important for us to get that kind of artistic mind. It helps us with a lot of other things, too. I just gotta watch that I don't screw up and paint the wrong thing, because I've done that before. Paint the wrong side of something. And I think I already did that. I think I just messed up. Oh my God, I think I just messed up. I think I just
just messed up. This is embarrassing. Okay, I'm gonna get back to that. I gotta let that dry. I just messed up. I gotta let that dry. I gotta go back over again with white. I gotta go white anyways over some stuff. Did I mess up? See, the thing is, I took away, I just kept the darkest colors. So even for me, I'm not even sure where the image is. When I put it together, it's dark here. This is all black. That's all black. That's supposed to be white. Yeah, I didn't mess up. <clears throat> okay, never mind. I'll paint over that. We'll get this done. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. That is embarrassing, man. Okay, calm down, man. Calm down. We got this. The problem is because it's designed on the spot. And I want to get rid of the any other line, any other detailed line and just go with the shadow because I love how it just kind of creates and comes together at the end when you see it for the first time. But man, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. You know what? I did that before on this. Let me show you this. I did that too on this piece here. See how it looks 3D with just the shadows? I messed up on this one too. I had this line in here opposite. So I'll fix it, man. I just got, I got the, I got some things going on. I'll leave this back here maybe. You guys see that? Can't really see it, can you? I don't know. I'll figure out this studio here too, so you guys can get the best view of some stuff. I got some artwork that I want to show you guys, see if you like it. Oh well. I can't believe I screwed up on this already. I just started it. Maybe because I'm nervous, maybe. Maybe because I got talking to you guys. I've never like done this before. But I appreciate you. Thanks for being here. And I'll try to get to you if you are asking questions. Like Mel was asking what I was painting. And it's going to come together at the end. And this is, like I said, my first real time kind of getting on this. So I will try my best, guys. Trying my best. And if anybody knows if I could play music, I won't go too loud, but I'd like to play some tracks, man. Or if it's going to be copywritten. Probably going to be copywritten. I probably can't play it, eh? Yeah, I can't believe I did that. All right. But I had a crazy day today. I've been going off on transgender, uh, transgender rights. I've been going off on uh, the red pill. Red pill, uh, you know, if you guys, you guys know about the red pill, like the red pill movement. Uh, I just found out about it, like... What do you guys think? Like all that stuff. Like I think transgender females should play transgender females like in sport. I don't think it's, they should, like I know they shouldn't play females, you know? Like transgender females should not be in the same division as females. I tra I've trained people my whole life. I know it's, it's an unfair advantage big time. And I don't care how many hormones you give somebody. You shouldn't give them hormones anyways. You shouldn't be messing with their hormones. But I don't care. That's not in the hormones. It's in the bones. It's the bones, really. Guys have powerful, more athletic hips. The hips are where the power lies. Women's hips are much different. Women's hips are for different things. For giving birth. They're the bringers of life. So I don't get it, man. I don't know why, like, it's, it's happening. I feel like I'm in a dream. Like, it's just, like, what, what are we doing? What are we doing here in this world? And, like,
like Red Pill is about like uh, high value men. Um, and like finding women that are young or something, like that don't have experience. So you could like give them experience, like 20, 21, 24, 20, you know, like, is that, am I, am I wrong? Is that, let me know guys, cause I'm just getting into this stuff now. I really want to push my YouTube page. I really want to push this. I want to really help who I could help with my talking, with my mental health speeches or um, maybe some ideas. We could help each other. You know, I don't want my page to be all about, you know, um, nonsense. I want to, you know, get some, I want you guys to get something out of this page. I want you guys to learn something, whether it's, you know, something you could take or something you could help somebody else with. Um, I think it's, I think it's awesome. Um, if we could even help just one or two people, you know, um, that's two lives, that's three lives, that's family members. That's a lot of people coming together and changing lives. But like I said, I appreciate you guys being here and this thing will come together once it's done. I just have to fix a little area. This paint will dry quick. It's a matte black I got. Not very expensive paint, but I don't need expensive for this kind of style of art because I'm literally just doing one color. Just a black, just a shade, one shade, I guess, to be technical. asking anything or want to know anything about me or this like I said I don't know yeah I'm all just uh, still on this scroll to the bottom what's up guys thanks for coming I'm just doing some painting man this is like come along and paint with Santo see what he's doing he just screwed up so for those that were here earlier you just saw me screw up and if you don't know what this is good you're not supposed to know till till it's done. So if you don't want to hang out, listen to me, you can come back a little bit later. It'll probably be like an hour, an hour and a half. Um, I gotta fix that. That's why it's gonna be a little bit longer. I, I screwed up, I was all nervous talking to you guys and it's all good. I'll get better at this. I'll get better at this. I just gotta make sure that that doesn't happen again because I'll be really screwed now. Yeah, transgender, man. They should be playing transgender, like their transgender counterparts in sports, right? Like, it's just crazy to me that people are looking at me sideways like, no, the transgender athlete deserves to be in the, wom in the woman because they are a woman. Straight up, they're not a woman. They're not a woman, right? They're special. They're more special than a woman. They're more special. They need to find more like them and get them in their own sport, right? But that's just me saying it. This guy from Fort McMurray, from Toronto, and uh, been training people my entire life, basically. It was all about muscle and size when I was younger. I was a big bodybuilder, but it didn't work out. It didn't work out for me because I had a small frame and I should have never messed with it. I should have never tried to get big, but the coaches back then, that's what they would tell you if you were smaller. Yeah. And that's all they kind of knew was get big. We need you bigger. So bodybuilding was the thing. And bodybuilding, honestly, is the worst thing to do when you're trying to be athletic. The worst thing to do. Because um, you're going to lose your ability. You got to... See, with bodybuilding, you, you lose a lot of your, your snapping power in your shoulders and your hips because you're building so much mass in those areas. You, you, that's what happened to me anyways. And I'm kind of going in a reverse now to undo those things. And that brings me to those Zen ideas of the teacup and, 
you know, there's a spoiled part of your tea that you don't know about, but it keeps coming back and you have to empty it and relearn everything. And sometimes that's hard, relearning everything, going back to the beginning, finding what you missed on, finding a thing that you thought you knew about, but it's actually something that you got to fix. It's been holding you back now. So, um, yeah, the Zen, the teacup, the, the whole idea that if you can't figure it out, it's not here, it's back there. There's a trauma that you got to uncover. I'm big on therapy. I, I, I took therapy a little while for a little while and uh, therapist had me crying like a little baby talking about some stuff I didn't really talk about, kind of avoided. And it fixed a lot of my issues. And for those of you who's going through that, I strongly recommend you give it a try. My wife is becoming a therapist now. And uh, she's just, she's just actually, I'm so proud of her. She just finished uh, her course. All she has now is the exam. Therapy course. And I was, I was the role play guy. So I was, uh, every, every section in her course had a topic and I put together, well, she put together a guy for me to be. So I was Lincoln. I was, um, she got, we got all these names. Like I can't think of them on the spot, but I was all these different individuals with different issues. And, uh, honestly, like, even though I was pretending, it kind of helped me. Cause some of them I, I couldn't, I had brought, I made up, but they were kind of part of my life that kind of fitted the, fitted the topic. And with Ray kind of pushing me through the questions and talking about it. And I was feeling better. Like it was, it's, it's remarkable, right? When we actually talk about our feelings and don't hide from them. But yeah, I'm so proud of her. This is a, uh, she's been doing this for 10 months, I think 10 months. Guys, I gotta use another brush. I just think that one is not really ideal for me. I'm gonna go with a rounded tip. Yeah, I've just been getting back into painting. I was really scared there for a while that my right arm was gonna work. If you guys look here, I don't wanna gross you out, but I atrophied big time. This is just one area that I atrophied in. Can you see kind of how it just sinks in there? Like there's no muscle, like that muscle's gone. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, it's it's really strange and my lat, I got my lat, like if I flex, you won't see that. The terrace minor that's on this side. Uh, chest is like caved in a little bit still, but it's all uh, the nerves and it, ta it taught me about that, which I would have never known, you know? I couldn't even use my arm. My arm was... Okay, just making sure I didn't mess up again. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, my arm, I couldn't even, like, after the surgery, my arm got worse because of the trauma that it was got kind of going through, I guess, through the neck, because I got two spots in between the C3, C4, and in between the C5, C6. Those two spots were uh, separated with, uh, with metal stuff, with metal and, and whatever they do. Like, this is incredible that I was alive now because it was a, 50 years ago, they wouldn't have had this technology. I'd be probably a quadriplegic. So it's, it's a, it was a new lease on life when I really looked at it that way. Um, but yeah, my right arm went on me. I couldn't even, I couldn't even lift it up, man. I couldn't even lift it. I couldn't figure, I couldn't navigate it behind my back. I had to do everything in my left hand uh, for a while. Um, it was so weird. I couldn't throw a ball. If I threw a ball, it would go right straight down to the ground. And um, it took me a while to be able to throw a ball again. And for those that know me, know I love ball. Like I play, I play slow pitch out here in Fort McMurray. I just love it, man. I'm not that good, but I love playing. But I feel like I could get really good, you know, if you practiced. And I love playing with uh, my team. We won the D Division uh, Championship last year out here. D Division is the lowest division in the league. Um, but we, we hardly lost, right? People thought we were sandbagging, but um, it was like the first time we put this team together. So the, the coaches, they, uh, they, well, they, they, the league basically put us in the division to see how we would do. And we kicked butt, we kicked butt. 
We kicked butt in D Division, man. I'm telling you. We won at the end of the year tournament, too. Well, it wasn't the same exact team. I put a team together. I've got some killers on my team. And we killed, we uh, beat the Intermediate Division in the Blueberry Tournament. So after that, they uh, basically told us that, yeah, you're not going to be going in the D Division next year. You're going to be in C. And we said, no problem. But it was funny because the trophy they gave us, it's upstairs. But you know how trophies are, right? They have the, the, cup, the cup at the top and whatever goes down. The, our trophy was the cup. So we just, we just had like a cup of the, like, it was hilarious when I saw it. And then everybody else had like, 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 like regular trophy looking things. And they spelt our name wrong. They spelt the name of the team wrong. Hilarious. Hilarious. We'll be coming back next year for the C division prizes. But it's going to be way better competition. It's going to be tough. And I want to be ready. I want to be ready physically. The wife too. The wife wants to be ready physically too. But the thing with me right now is I gotta watch that I don't shake too much. If I don't, uh, some days when my arm is really bad, um, I gotta take gabapentin. I, have, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's like a nerve, almost like a nerve blocker, but it does stuff for your brain as well. It kind of like heightens your alertness, I guess, or something. I'm not sure, but um, it is like a neurotropic. And for those that are here, I'm just doing some shadow art. So what I do is I put art together from uh, an image and I take away all the detail and I try to figure out what are the darkest spots on it. And it doesn't look like nothing until it's done. You might be able to figure out before it's done. Let me know if you do, but it, you can't really tell because it, it comes together at the end. Our eyes are able to figure it out once they kind of see the images. Uh, come together but it's it's freaky and it's exactly what i what i was thinking when i was kind of designing the style trying to find the style yeah so i have this area right here guys i'm just waiting to dry and then i got to go paint over it with the white again yeah because i screwed up there um, but welcome to the page what are you guys up to any artists out here? And I'm just scrolling now, guys, if you guys think like, what is this guy doing just staring at the screen? I'm just scrolling to see if I missed any questions or, or concerns, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm from Toronto. My, uh, my father is Italian, my mother is Greek. My name is Santo. Um, my, mom's, my mom was born in Greece. She came to Canada when she was about, I don't know, 12 or 13, I think. My dad was born in, born in Toronto. And for those that know me, they know my dad's a pretty bad dude. He's not a good guy. He's not willing to learn from his mistakes. He's not willing to take responsibility for anything. He's a classic narcissist with a temper and it's pretty embarrassing. And um, I'm just happy my mom has finally got the guts to say, like, to stand up to him and just say, like, call him out on his bullshit. Because that was the biggest thing that affected me and my brother was just how my mom was taking everything. And, like, for those that watched my other live, I was talking about him a bit and how my mom, like, pretty much raised three kids. Like, he was, like, and he was, like, the worst one. Wait a second here, why is that like that? Why is there that black dot there? Did I paint, did I do it again? Did I screw up again? We're just gonna, we're just gonna see what happens. We're just gonna see what happens. I'm, I'm gonna keep going. Keep going, baby. Keep going. I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. That's the one thing. Once I once I take all the details away and keep the black, and then I just outline it with a marker, so I so I know where to go. Sometimes I, I'm getting into it too much, and I'm painting I'm painting the wrong side, and it messes it up. So I just gotta be really careful. And I'm jumping all over the board. I know I'm just, I'm just kind of like that. I get bored in certain sections, and I gotta go somewhere else. I don't know why. 
But here, here's my Eiffel Tower. I did that with this with this one too. I, did, I painted the wrong side of up here and it got screwed up. And But I ended up fixing it. I'll show you guys another one. I'll be back in a second. This is the one the same size as the one I'm doing here. You guys see that? Godfather. Same idea. I just I just took the darkest spots and I just kind of that's that's the only detail you're gonna have, and then it just comes together, right? But yeah. Would you be able to see any of that? I don't know. Wherever that dot was, it's gone now. So, hope it wasn't too important. And that's the thing too. You can take away, you could not pay attention. You can take away this little slight, slightest thing, and it ruins the whole image. It will ruin the whole image. You won't be able to. Your dyes won't be able to catch it. So I'm like constantly trying to. I'm on that edge of being super careful. But I'm also trying to talk to you guys, which I'm not used to, right? So. I'm going to blame it on you. I'm going to blame it on you. I think that's okay. Until I get better. I'll get better at it. If you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, I'll definitely get better at it. But yeah, I used to do murals with that. I did my dad. I, we did uh Oh, now I feel like I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, I did murals with my dad, and he brought me to, he uh, he had a cousin, a gay cousin that was a hairdresser, and he was married to a big decorator, like a big decorator in town that had a lot of clients, and we would do jobs in the uh, bridal path, and all sorts of really rich areas, like these places were mansions that we painted, and we did like uh, murals on the walls, or, or uh, we made the wall look like it was marble, like he was really, he was really good at that. He used an eraser. He used to always joke that that was his secret weapon, but he knew how to make the eraser go down and put the paint a certain way that it would actually look like marble and clear coat it. And I was kind of amazed by, by his skills. As bad of a person as he was, he could paint very well. Yeah, I'm just uh, just been talking a lot about things that have been bothering me that I don't really make sense. And I just, and it may be trivial, you know, but I just see like mountain, like I just see it inching, 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 and uh, I don't like it, and it's bothering me. These kind of stupid thoughts, these these things that just don't make sense, are kind of bothering me. transgender sports right they should have their own division I don't think I'm crazy saying that but people are trying to make me feel crazy and it's just like what where are we living right now like when did I pass through a different dimension and and uh, red pill guys do you know about the red pill I just came across that where I guess it's like that Andrew Tate or whatever what he talks about I can mess with some Andrew Tate stuff about being strong. I, I, I preach strong men, strong men and strong women. I preach all about that. I think, I think we, we all gotta be strong. Oh no, I did something, I did something. No, I didn't. We all gotta be strong, man. But the problem is strong women can overpower strong men. I'm not gonna explain that, but the men have to be stronger. The men have to be super strong. And uh, 
not physically, I'm not talking physically, I'm talking emotionally, I'm talking verbally, mostly. I'm talking like communi communicatively, because uh, no joke, no word of a lie, as they say. I've had five guys come up to me in the last two weeks wanting mental toughness training. And when I asked them why, the responses were so they could handle their wives, but not in a way that is, you know, that many may think, like just be able to communicate with them better, be stronger at communicating, be stronger at not getting emotional and getting white boy raged and breaking a wall or something, you know? Um, so it's important that us as men can, can, can handle our emotions because women, strong women, which strong men want because we don't, we don't want women that don't have experience, right? I thought until I saw the red pill thing and then red pills all about what, like a 20 year old, 22 year old, 24 year old, like with no experience, no, no sex. And she's the perfect one. Like, am I missing something? Do you guys, like, I want somebody who's been through some shit. I want somebody who's strong that could lift me up when I'm down, right? And I'm going to be strong for her because I'm lifting myself up too. Like, I want, I don't know, man. It was just, it was weird watching that. It was weird watching that. Like, I thought it was a joke. I'm like, where are we? And yeah, I, I agree. You don't want to be hassled by your wife when you come home. You don't want to be nagged and stuff. But if you're not a strong man and able to handle that, that strong woman lessens and becomes weaker because she needs a strong man to check her opinions because they're not always right. But she needs to be checked correctly. She needs to be, her opinions need to be rebuttaled correctly and and without anger without emotion because i think a lot of men don't know how to do that a lot of women are very smart man my wife she's a genius she's a genius I'm, i i i guarantee no she is she's very smart she's a cardiac rehab specialist I met her back home in toronto I, I got out of a really bad situation and i was talking to my grandma every day every day I was talking to my grandma because she was the only one that would pick up the phone, collect call, and she said, don't worry, when you get out, you'll find your angel. And that kept, get, kept giving me hope, kept giving me hope. When I finally did, it was around Halloween, October beginning of October and I wanted to go out I wanted to have a good time so there's a local pub in my area and I phoned my buddy up a longtime friend that he uh he runs a couple clubs in Toronto good life fitness in Toronto ran a couple of them now he runs for uh selling products for techno gym you guys know that uh like uh I think Kim Kardashian was like promoting it and stuff like that anyways you guys seen Kim Kardashian some of her workouts like how do you get a butt like that with the quads that she has? It's not possible. So it's a BBL for sure, right? And and she's crazy as shit, man. I'm like, what is this with the cable machine? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. So we went out to a bar. I'm drinking. Pretty girly drink, actually. I don't even know why. But I was drinking like a cranberry vodka. I just thought it'd like be refreshing or something. But anyways, I'm there having a good time. It's Halloween, so I'm dressed up. I'm leather suit. And mind you, I'm, I'm about 250 pounds at this time. I'm about 250 at this time. And um, 250, I'm like 195, 200 now. So think of me like... I'm pretty in like a belly too, right? So I was like big, but I like just in puffy cheeks. My cheeks were so puffy. Um, and white, white contact eye, eyes in, white contact eyes and fangs that were like custom made. And I had them like years ago and I would just wore them again. And I'm just dancing there. I like to move. I'm just hanging out, you know? And uh, 
there's a girl like coming across the dance floor. She's wearing like a score outfit, you know, score the chocolate bar, the chocolate bar score. She like, so it's like just a brown straight dress. And she just caught my eye. And then as, as I was looking at her, as I was kind of watching her, she may have felt me watching her because she just turns and looks at me and we both caught eyes. So she's going onto the dance floor and I'm kind of standing by a, by a, by a pole, like, you know, like a bar, you know, like a um, column, you know, in the bar. Uh, we're just hanging out, swaying left to right. And she comes up to me and she's hammered. At the time, I didn't know she was that hammered because she's, she's able to control herself. She's able to, she's not stupid. She's a smart woman. She, you know, she's not looking like uh, she's a, a uh, you know, just, just hammered and like out of it and she can't talk, but she was. And we found out afterwards that um, she puked that night going home, but she was out with like a bunch of dudes. Her girlfriends that night ditched her because they all live in St. Catharines. She lives in Toronto because she was working at Centenary Hospital. She was a cardiac rehab coordinator there. So she was running the, the clinic for cardiac rehab. So basically all the people that had heart attacks or heart issues or that needed to get back, the stress tests, all that kind of stuff, she was running that. And uh, they didn't get back to her. So she's like, fuck. So she knew some guys. So I think she was seeing some guy or, or talking to some guy and they all picked her up, brought her. And she's like one of the dudes too, right? She's not like, like she's like, she gets all dressed up and you know heels and dresses and stuff. But as far as like, she like she watches football. She she's she's she plays ball with us. She's uh, she she's she's like another dude. Just the way she talks and shit, right? So she was hanging out with these guys, and uh, I met uh, I met a couple of them. Seemed pretty cool. We ended up making out. Just some you know some tongue lashing, some drunk tongue lashing, and went our separate ways, exchanged numbers, and mind you now, like, I'm at a point where I'm living with my parents, I'm kind of down, I'm kind of at a down point in my life, and, uh, I don't know, just something about her, anyways, we talked, and she got, uh, we, we, we talked, and, uh, we, we made a date, and she was, kind enough to pick me up at my parents' place. And for, for a moment there, when she pulled in, because my parents, my, my dad did a number on the place. It was, uh, and just outside, for those that know Toronto area or whatever, GTA, it's uh, just outside in Whitby, Whitby, Ontario. And it was a nice house, nice little neighborhood. So she thought kind of, I think she thought it was mine until she saw, you know, my parents, my ogre of a dad, the guys, I'm like, Dad, just don't walk around with your underwear, okay? I got I got a girl coming over. Like, the guy's ridiculous. But once she did find out it wasn't mine and I was staying with them and kind of my past and everything, because I told her everything right off the bat. I, that night, I told her everything. How I am as a human, like what I like to do, the relationships I was in, and what I reminisced and... and know I did wrong, you know, and, uh, we were just blunt with each other for the first little while. We were just feeling each other out, but seeing if we could handle it. Um, because she never had a boyfriend like me. I never had a girl like her. And, uh, and we did, you know, I like to be out late at night, man. I like to go out. I like to go dancing. I like to go party. She's got to be okay with that. She's a bookworm. She reads like 65 books a year. Um, she's in bed by 9.30. She's got that nine to five job at the at a primary care network. She's the exercise specialist here in uh, Fort McMurray. So she helps everybody. Like she went from cardiac rehab, specifically the heart to, now she does childhood obesity. She works with I, um, um, pulmonary rehab. Um, they have dietitians there. She's, she's also, the, uh, she works as a part-time um, behavioral uh, consultant helping the therapist there and that's what kind of got her into this course because seeing that so much guys I could give you the perfect meal plan I could give you the perfect workout plan I could give you the perfect everything on a platter but it won't work unless you conquer your mind and you find out why sometimes you don't do you don't work the hardest you don't you might not try you might make excuses there all these things come into 
the mind and kind of these, like I said before, those uncomfort uncomfortable truths, those traumas that we had in the past that we're avoiding, that we really need to go back and fix. And my therapist had me crying like a little baby and I don't care to admit that. And she's a little blonde girl, probably in her mid twenties. And she asked the right questions, man. And she got into my brain and she got some shit out of me. And it was scary, but it was good. I was screaming, man, into a pillow, right? And this little condo uh, apartment, like she, I think she rents the hotel room or the something. It, the, it was amazing. It was amazing. I don't think I've ever cried in that long. I just let out all these emotions. And there's a few weeks of that with her. But... I'm able to talk about that kind of stuff now and it doesn't bother me. And I'm able, I was able to break through whatever those barriers were that kept me from being the best me I could be. And I'm still working on that, but it's one of those things where I have a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Now I kind of understand the struggling part of it now and, and how that really does make us stronger. We just got to really keep working on it and working on why we're having these issues, why we're getting upset, why we're always getting, you know, uh, feeling like we're getting thrown back to square one again, uh, you know, losing your job or, um, you know, maybe relationships aren't working out and you just don't know why you're just finding the wrong guys or the wrong, the wrong girls or, and it's, a lot of times it's kind of those things that, that we're doing to ourselves that we just don't even know, but we do know and we don't want to fix it because we think it's not that serious, right? We just think it's not that serious. Um, Anybody know what this is yet? Probably not because I screwed up that part. But we're getting there. We're getting there. We'll see what happens. I'll come up here. I'll come up here and see if anybody has talked to me or said anything. I gotta scroll down. It's probably look funny kind of coming up right to the screen. But hey guys, uh Alvardo, Amber, the man of sin. What's it called when you guys do those little blue dots? Is that something? Uh yeah, I know nothing about this. I know nothing about this. Creator challenge, challenge, creator lounge challenge. If anybody could fill me in on this and help me out, maybe make it make my page uh, awesome. I would be much appreciative and I'd give you everything, man. And that's the thing that some people don't understand is there's people out there like, I don't know, like myself, for example, like if a girl in a bar offered to this is what happened at a bar actually this is what happened at a bar one time and uh not a bar a strip club i was at a strip club and uh but i treat a strip club as a bar as i love going to strip clubs just listen to music way better atmosphere i play pool but it's got a stigma behind it right like you're going to a strip club and i don't even think much of it i i love the girls i just you know if anything i'm protecting them i never go for dances they all know that they don't bother me but there's always rotating shifts where other girls come to town. You don't really know everybody. I had a good time one night, meeting some of them, meeting, you know, like meet some people in there. And the girl's like, want a drink? Drinking that night, right? So I said, sure, I'll take a drink. So she orders, got herself some, got me what I wanted. I don't even, I think I was drinking vodka Red Bull still that time. I was, that was my drink forever. Now I got vodka, vodka, water, not soda, vodka, water, and lime is my drink now. Vodka, water, lime. I love it, man. Getting a little freaked out sometimes, man. I'm looking at these sections here. Where I'm like, am I doing everything right? I think I am. I think I am. So anyways, uh, she gets the drink and they asked me to pay for it. They asked me to pay for it. I wasn't going to pay for it. I got a little upset. I got a little heated because she offered me a drink. But what happened was in the midst of my conversation, in the midst of me being upset with her, and them, the, the, the bartender too, who before I knew her before and she was, she's a sweetheart, but um, I realized right then I'm in a strip club. <laughs> the 
felt so stupid, man. So I paid for it. But she doesn't know. That's the thing. Like, afterwards, I didn't talk to her. But if she would have actually bought me my drink, I would have bought her probably 10 that night. Easily. Like, women, you guys don't know what the power of buying a guy a drink is first. They would spoil you. Trust me. They would spoil you. Instead of you trying to get something off them first. I tell you straight up. It's a risk. Not many people are like me. But that's what I would do. I would have bought her drinks all night, man. It's so appreciative she bought me a drink. That's Doing stuff like that for me means something to me. Somebody spending their money on me. That means a lot to me, man. I know it's hard to get. It's hard to hard earn money. Money does, that's not easy come. But yeah, it was just a weird situation. I remember that. I got, I got upset until I wasn't, until I was like, I'm the biggest idiot in the world. I really am. I'm an idiot. I can't believe I'm in a strip club and I wanted the stripper to buy me a drink. I thought like, but if she, that's the thing, if she would have, fuck, you got a drink for her. I'm going to get a drink for me, get a drink for that girl on stage. You know, like yeah, she's going to have a drink waiting for her every time. Anyways, I kind of, kind of felt stupid. Kind of felt stupid on that one. I'm just kind of filling some areas in. I don't know if we're going to see anything yet. I think it's upside down to you guys too. <clears throat> but it's just easier for me to do this side first because it's got all the little tiny pieces that I wanted to work on. And then I'll flip it over. I'm gonna have to go over everything again, but you will be able to see what it is before I go over everything because I'm gonna have to let it dry for the night. But it's just so I could get the color even because I'm gonna be giving this to uh, Ray's co worker, her boss, as a gift. She's gonna be going to, uh, she's gonna be going to something that this person is uh, actually doing. That may be a hint. Fort McMurray guys, those that are new, how you doing? I'm just uh, hanging out and, you know, painting. I'm Fort McMurray, where are you guys from? From Toronto originally, spent some time in the military, New Brunswick, Gagetown. Didn't really paint back then, wasn't really into it. Trying to be this machismo soldier. Wasn't me, just wasn't me, man. But it was good to build that discipline because I needed something in my life. So getting out there, getting away from my family, getting away from my dad. And, you know, just feeling that, like, almost appreciated a little bit more from my parents. Even though, I don't know, I don't know, it just was weird. It just was really weird. Yeah, let's finish some of this up. I don't want to take too long. I'm not going to go too detailed on it. I think you guys will be able to see it if I just kind of keep it close. But yeah, the red pill just blew my mind. And then the comments blew my mind. Because I, I always read the comments, right? I'm always reading comments and... I'll respond. I, I, I write on comments. Like I, 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 I want to protect the streamers. Like I want to eventually stream. Like I want to eventually like, well, I'm doing it now, I guess, but I want to get good at it. I want people like, I want to help people. You know, I want to see if my life lessons that I'm learning through can help others, man, I'd be so happy. And if they actually like me, they listen to me, man, that'd be awesome. But some of these comments, holy shit, you really got to have a thick skin. But I just comment back on them, right? I just comment back, like, why are you saying that? That's kind of rude. I don't know why I do that. I'm just like, I, I stick up for the streamer. I stick up for the whose channel it is, right? Because it's like, don't you think it's their house? You're kind of inside their house? Like, why you, you know? Like, like YouTube is the town, and this guy lives in this house. And, like, I know this one guy, Sean Jones, and he's deleting comments. 
I don't know if he is. I don't know. That's what some guys were saying in there. But I'm like, who cares if he is? It's his house, right? And uh, the guy's like, no, it's our house. He's got to show us. He's got, he needs us. I'm like, it's not your house. Can you cancel shit? Can you, can he delete shit? It's his house. Like, am I retarded? Like, what's going on? Like, you're telling me you got more pull in this area than he does? Although he can do everything here? It's his house, right? Am I, am I wrong? Am I wrong with that? Guys, let me know. Anybody see this yet? What's going on here? Flip her over. Flip her over. I'm gonna show you guys another piece I did recently. I got some pieces in the garage as well. But I'm just doing the shadow work. And I hope you guys like it when I'm done. I'll be right back. Like I said, I've been trying to get this style for, I don't know, maybe four or five years, but I haven't really got it till just a few months ago. And it's all about shadow and light and using the very minimum of both. Like the, no detail at all, really just getting the darkest shadow and the whitest light to make your image. So this here is a teacup. I'm going to, it's just like, it looks better the farther away it is. I don't know if you guys could see that. It looks more detailed the better the farther away. Um, this one here is me, my wife and Giovanni and my bulldog. You guys will eventually meet my bulldog, uh, but he's the best. So do you guys kind of see that? See that image? It's shiny, but see the bulldog, my wife's head, my head. Yeah. So yeah, so these are the kind of things I'm into. If you guys like doing this too and want to watch my channel, I'll definitely be doing this more. And this is what I got for my mom. So I played around with a little bit of color. She's from Greece. This is like the, uh, Parthenon, I guess. And yeah, just, you know, like you look right at it, you're, you don't see nothing, right? Like it's just, you know, little blocks, little blobs. As soon as you back up, the 3D, it just pops out at you. Details just pop out. Your, your brain just kind of fixes it that way, right? So those are some pieces I have. I have some more in the gym, which is in the garage that I hung up. I got like a Michael Jordan piece famous one where he's dunking over uh, Carl Malone. And I got one more piece to do after this, one more uh, art piece to do after this, uh, a memorial for a guy's dogs. He has uh, two dogs left, but the picture is, is four dogs. So I can't wait to do that. I want you guys to be with me on that one too. It's, it'd be pretty cool. Um, where are we at now? I'm on this side. Okay, let's just keep it going. I'm gonna go with a little bit bigger brush here. Let's get this area done. Let's get this area done a little bit quicker. I do have to paint that area white again, so I'm gonna have to get the white set up. Paint that area. But yeah, so I was just getting into some crazy, I guess, rants lately on my Facebook and just rants lately on social media. Just not really understanding things and just being okay to just ask and be okay with just being like, why is this not, why is this happening like this? You know, the transgender females playing females. That's not right. The hip structure, it's the hip structure, the hip structure of males develop much more power, much more explosiveness. They're made for that. So I just don't know. I just don't know why it's an issue that we can't get their divisions. And people are saying maybe, you know, the trans athlete, that's not fair to the trans athletes. They're not going to be able to play with who they think they, they are like a trans female playing with a trans female. Um, but that's just ruining it for the females. Like I train a bunch of female athletes and they would just destroy me if I knew like a trans female 
beat their butt somewhere, you know, on the course or whatever, and they've been working so hard for it. And there's, there's really, it's really a big difference when it comes to power and, and output and the ability to just have this oomph, an oomph of anger, an oomph of tension. I know women have that too, God, God I know, but it's just, it's different because of the male hips and how they spin, the way they're made. Think of our body as like a, just think of the hips, the spine and the shoulders, and the shoulders are wider, right? But think of the hips turning and swinging the arms, right? So this turn, swinging everything, that's, that's, that's the power of it. So it's that snap and toss or throw or hit or punch. Um, that's the power or run or anything, but it's all revolves, uh, revolves around our hips and hormones. They shouldn't be given them. Hormones shouldn't be given to them because if they already think they're a female, then why do you got to give them hormones? Why do you got to fuck up their system? They already think they're a female. Give them what they want, like cosmetics maybe, cosmetics, I don't know. But I don't, the pills, the medication, that shit shouldn't be done, right? But I just feel like I'm in this backwards world where that's what they're trying to do. That's what they're trying to say is right. And I'm like, no way. And I'm only in this world because I'm an athlete. I'm a, I train athletes. I'm a mental toughness coach. Uh, athletes come to me. Teams come to me when their teams are getting really emotional. I go, I do uh, little speeches, I guess you could say motivational talks, little, you know, I kind of go down on them about, you know, what are you guys doing here? You're, so many people would love to be in your spot. Like what's going on? Like your coach is telling me you're not in the gym. You got a free gym membership. You guys are out here in the middle of nowhere. Like you, 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 you have the time. You have no distractions like a big city has. You literally are in the middle of nowhere. And the other team should be scared of you. The other, I remember playing in Toronto and having some Northern teams come down. You're just like, these guys are like hillbilly jump, uh, lumberjacks. Just going to that do nothing but play hockey. And they're going to kick our butts, you know, but you got to build the fear in the teams that you're playing against. And if you're not, they're just going to come up here like, not care, not care. But, yeah. Tell them to get rid of their girlfriends. You know, got girlfriends bothering you? Give me a call saying you cannot call on me. Where are you? Where are you? Get rid of them. Boyfriends, same thing. You know, girls teams, get rid of them. You don't need that hassle, man. They're pushing those buttons. They know they could, they're pushing those buttons. They know they could push, you know, I'm not saying bye when they hang up. Oh shit. She's upset. Now I'm trying to 20 minutes to phone her. Those little stupid games, you know, it'll work. But it's going to take you off your game, man. It's going to take you off your game. You'll be thinking about that. Who's she with? She with somebody else now, you know, you don't need that. You don't need that guys you're too young for that kind of stuff. Trust me. Trust me. Women will eat you alive at that age, especially. All ages, really. Women will eat you alive at all ages if you're not strong enough. But for boys, for that are in sports, focus on your sport. Focus on your sport. Focus on your sport. Focus on your sport.